Go this evening. And we're here today to talk about leadership. And this training agenda this evening is what is leadership to you? Leadership potential, leadership building, and we're gonna have a little activity. So if you can grab some pen and paper and come right back, I'll give you guys 60 seconds. <laughs> All right, great. So today we're gonna to describe all the way through what you think leadership is right now. And we're gonna go into finding out what leadership can be. So we're gonna be doing a whiteboard now. Um, everybody's gonna have access to this whiteboard and we're gonna ask the question right now with no training or any kind of refresher course, what does leadership mean to you? So I'm gonna escape here and I'm gonna come back into here and we're gonna start our whiteboard. I'd love to get some feedback of everybody seeing the whiteboard and is able to utilize the whiteboard. Have you guys used the whiteboard function on Zoom already? Seeing but can't edit. Okay, let me see what I can do about that. So basically you can add. Great, yes, yeah, so that's excellent. So what does leadership mean to you? I'm seeing someone typing, doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. That's excellent. If you want to put in your, your name um, in your... So just on the left-hand side, you're seeing sticky notes. See if you can get a sticky note and fill in your sticky notes. If you want to raise your hand as well, and if you want to talk about it, and then I could always type it in for you, that's also an option. Wheelan, are you getting through? I'm not actually. <laughs> oh, I wonder. Okay, if I can, if I create a sticky, sticky note, can you click on that sticky note and edit it? No, and I think the problem is probably on my end because Khadija tried to do this with me already and I told her I wasn't seeing anything. Oh, okay. It's probably that your Zoom isn't updated because it's a new feature. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll definitely do that after. All right. No problem. So if you wanted, you could tell me if you want to add anything. What does leadership mean to you in a couple of ways? Um, I think leadership is not only having like the confidence, because I think people flock to others in a room when they think they're the most boastful, like they, they talk really loudly, but also having the competence to lead others in that role. Really very powerful statement, yes. I'm seeing Christine with her hand up. You can go ahead and talk. Yeah, hi. Um, similar to me, I'm not able to edit. It's probably, I don't know, because I'm using my phone, but I'm Possible. not able to edit at all. But I agree with what the last speaker said. It's definitely not the loudest person in the room. But I think the person that is just, that's committed to the task at hand, and they're not asking persons to do something they themselves wouldn't do. And secondly, I guess um, for a specific word, I will use integrity. Lovely. I love that. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Is anyone else having any trouble with the whiteboard and wants help? Just please put your hand up. Also, these two that are in here already. Does anyone have a name for these? I want to give you guys props. <laughs> yeah. 
yes, you can put it in the chat as well and it will it will be added. I love it. <laughs> All right, this is looking really great. So I think that everybody has like a preconception of what they think leadership is. And basically, we're on the right track already. Um, because I think each of us would have been exposed to different types of leaders, different types of leadership. Um, I think most of us here are leaders ourselves, even though we we don't know it. <laughs> so tonight we're all here to kind of tease out these things about what exactly is leadership. And of course, we know that not everybody is a leader but you can be a leader at not being a leader. <laughs> All right, someone's writing adapting situations as a leadership uh, teacher. I agree with that truly. Okay, great. So if everyone is finished, I'm getting another one here. Right, excellent. So I'm gonna start sharing my, my screen again. Thank you all so much for your contribution to the whiteboard. I'm going to be exporting this and we're gonna look at it at the end um, as well. Oh, apparently I can, um, I can share this link to everyone. That's interesting. Okay, I'll play with this more later. <laughs> Great, so closing the whiteboard off and going back to sharing my screen. So back to the slides. So what is leadership to you? And we wanted to discuss some examples of strong and weak leadership. So that's what I was talking about just now. Uh, all of us have been exposed to different kinds of leadership in our week. Does anybody want to unmute and just chat a little bit about What's an example of a strong leader that you've come in contact with? Something that really, uh, if you want to give an example, like a situation where somebody exhibited strong leadership, please unmute and you can go ahead and speak. Can I see you? Thank you, Shanda. What 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 example of of strong leadership did you see in me? Oh my god! Because, because like you were organizing this, and then you came and asked me if I would want to be involved. I'm like, of course, I want to be involved. And like, I I know I know you can be kind of weird about it, but like, Katrina, you're my girl. We good. We good. So like, I don't. You don't need to do that. You don't need to apologize. Just hit me up anytime. You have my number. Don't ever. So don't feel that type of way about it. So. I, leadership is putting yourself out there. I know you, it's kind of weird to just walk, talk to people, but you do it. You keep doing it with mermaid and everything. But so, like, yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will keep. I will keep up at, um, doing that, right? And I, I do have your number, so I'll be calling on you all the time. <laughs> oh, so, anyone else? Um, it's more like a comment, Sophie, like piggybacking on off what Shandell said. Katrina, you and Khadija are people I look up to because you guys aren't, um, you don't sugarcoat things. Like you're bubbly and you laugh all the time and you, you really get to the, the, the integrity of things and you don't like hold back on what you have to say. And I think that's strong leadership skills because we have people that, you know, say things and sugarcoat it, but you guys say it raw and real, and I think I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is true, though. It's good to not um, 
you know, blindside people with, with things just to get them on board. So like, if, if I give a personal anecdote of um, strong leadership, uh, there was a boss that I had and they didn't want, they didn't really want a leadership role per se, but what they did that got me to understand that they were strong leaders, that they went in with us, even though we were their subordinates. They did all the grant work with us. They did all the work that, you know, anybody else might have said, oh, well, I'm above that that position or whatever. So for me, it's like sometimes you have to be thrust into the situation as well. Um, it's, it's, it's something very difficult for somebody who's not, who doesn't want to be a leader to show leadership potential, I guess. But it's still something that is there. I'm seeing in the chat. Uh, let me just open up the chat. Right. Uh, the one that leads a group or a company from me or put up the interpretation, being a voice of a community group or organization. That is very true. Thank you so much for the translation. Yes, um, that is true. That is true. So sometimes these are like the, the elders in the population or like in a community that then become the, the voice of the community. So I'm seeing two hands raised. Um, who's the first one to raise hands if you can unmute and speak? Oops. Yeah. Hi, evening everyone. So Tracy here. Hi, Kat. <laughs> so um, an example of a strong leadership and someone I truly admire is my pastor. She's a female. And being a female pastor is a very difficult job because like most of our leadership positions in society is dominated by the males. But she has the ability for me is and and being there every single day, every time we're building a church and this woman is at the helm. And for me, you know, she's an incredible leader and one that I admire. And really, it, for me, it comes down to the fact that no one gets left behind in who she engages. Yes. Thank you so much, Tracy. That is, yeah, it's true. I mean, sometimes we are thrust into these roles. Sometimes, you know, we learn things in these roles, but that is a very important uh, role as well. And as a female, we do know the, the gender disparities that we are facing in society. So it is interesting to see a lot of you know, role models in the face of, of all our stereotypical uh, Caribbean <laughs> society. <laughs> so I think I saw one more hand raise. Hi, yes. So I have an example too of somebody that I try to mirror every day. So I had an internship back in grad school and it was with an organization I really, really admired. And the person, she had this habit and I think we kind of underestimate or we don't appreciate kindness enough. But at the end of the day, no matter what, she would always say like, thank you to us. And I thought that was such a special thing. I remember once, I guess she forgot to say thank you to me. So I was like out of the building and she actually like ran down the step and she was like, you know, I just want to say thank you. And that's, I think it's a small thing, but it's so important to acknowledge people, especially when they're helping you. And I think we take a lot of it for granted. So she's somebody that I try to mirror and I really try to appreciate persons and the skills they bring, um, you know, with projects and so forth that I'm leading. Lovely, lovely. I love that. That's excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I think that um, I try myself to, to do that as well. Um, seeing something in the chat, Tracy. Yes, kindness is appreciated. That's true. So that's an excellent thing that you then want to mirror that behavior. So that's great. So I'm going to just skip forward and pass the web whiteboard results since we saw it already. Um, and I have a little quote to segue us into the next part. So leaders instill in their people a hope for success and a belief in themselves. Positive leaders empower people to accomplish their goals. And I think that everything that we've been saying uh, is, is basically like that as well. 
So it's a, it's a good quote for us to set our inspiration on fire for the next part. <laughs> so leadership building and how do we realize our capacity? Uh, so the potential for someone to become a leader, you can ask yourself these questions. Do I get results? Uh, do I provide direction and a sense of meaning to others by reminding them of what is important? Do I create authentic human relationships? Do I generate and sustain trust? Do I give people a sense that they are investing in the future? Do I convey a feeling of hope? And do I motivate and inspire others? So this is something for introspection as well as looking at the leaders in our lives. Do we see them giving us like ability to give results? Um, do they really have that authentic human relationship? Because a lot of the times in our society, we notice, you know, management and if you're in the workplace or even if you're in NGO or civil society work, the authentic human relationships sometimes are lacking. And I think that when you are a member of an organization or an employee, you can tell when that is an, an, inauthentic, an, an inauthentic relationship. You can tell when somebody is just using you to do things. And I think that the mark of a true leader, the people who actually get people to rally around them, they are the ones that create trust and are very honest you know, those are the things that we have to look for in the people that we are around. I hope you guys all agree. <laughs> Anybody has any feedback for me on this? You can you can tell me. Did I miss anything? Tracy agrees. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and Sean agrees. Yes. Excellent. So that's what I saw as the leadership potential in people. And then there's types of leadership. Now, this to me was new when I was doing research on this. And I've, I mean, I've been to leadership trainings before and stuff like that. But to break it down into like, there are basically three types of leadership. It was quite interesting. So the first one is authoritarian or autocratic leadership. So that's the person that's really hands-on, rule-based and time-bound. That basically means like, that person is going to just send you with a task and expect you to come back with that task. <laughs> the democratic or participative leadership is mutual respect, consultative, and builds on a team strengths. So those are the ones that are really going to encourage everyone to get involved. Everybody's ideas are, you know, are valid. They're the ones that will try to make sure everybody's heard and seen. Um, and that is, I think, my style of leadership. And then the third is the delegating or the laissez fair leader who just delegates, is very flexible, and lets everybody go on their individual strengths. So that's a person who will say, OK, we have to get this done. Go forth and do, and come back to me when it's done. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys could identify people in your lives who have those types of tendencies. Yes, I'm seeing Tracy saying, I take on all three depending on the situation, I must confess. And I agree. Sometimes we just juggle between them, which is fine because it's in different situations. We are supposed to be able to be flexible um, to see who we're working with. Because I mean, the thing about leadership is it all depends on the people that you are working with as well. If it is that you are, for example, a leader of a team or something, you have to then flex to find what the best type of leadership is for that team. And sometimes it's very difficult because you want to have the best outcome. And sometimes it takes a bit of flexing between the start and the middle of a project, say, let's just think about it as a project, to find that, that happy medium of what type of leadership. 
I'm seeing a hand raised. You can go ahead. Yes, I'd just like to add, I agree too. I think as a woman, sometimes we're expected to be maybe number two, being so participatory and, you know, letting others take on a more, um, I guess, making them a part of discussion is very, very important, but also not taking your own voices out because you want to please the group. And I think a lot of times as female or as young people, we want to make everybody happy. So sometimes we're afraid to be a little bit more authoritative or delegate tasks. So I think for me, I agree. I think there is um, there's a way to incorporate all three of them because for example, when you have a project and it's, it's important to be um, you know, keep your timelines. And sometimes you have to be a little bit strict about that. It's very important to know your team's strengths and definitely being flexible and so forth. So I definitely see merits in all three of them. Excellent, yes, thank you so much. So yes, we do have to be very flexible. Okay, I'm seeing more hands raised, so you please go ahead, Chan. I, um, yeah, from like my perspective, one thing I found is like with leadership and projects and stuff, never do like a full project right away, do some team building so you could, that's how you figure out people's ways of being like, you know, this person will always be late. So, you know, you have to get on them because we in the islands, we know this is a true fact. So you just, you don't jump in right away. There's a team building part and eventually you just know what's, and it's not, and it's not like saying it's a bad thing or it's a good thing. It's just understanding where people are coming from and you know them, hopefully. That's Thank you so much. And that is so true because you know that everybody's different. Now, I recently, um, you all know the, I think I call it the MTIV or something, personality types. Like the science behind that kind of intrigued me recently and that there are 16 personalities and stuff like that, right? But regardless, there is a personality type for each person. <laughs> They hardly have a change. If it is, let's know what they're about and they're willing to share that with you and tell you honestly, honestly, sorry, I am going to be late every day to this meeting. I am going to only give you two hours of my time. I think that that's excellent because at least you know where to meet that person. So it's always, always, always honesty is the best policy and try to get people to be honest with you as well when you're in a working relationship. And in another relationship to any relationship in life. I think humans are just very complicated. Um, and we just have to be more honest with each other to say, okay, this is who I am. This is where I am. And let's work together towards this common goal. So yeah, does anybody else have anything to add? I'm not seeing yeah. anymore. Yeah, I, go ahead. It's so, I you know, team building or working with a team can be so, so hard. Like there are times when I mean, it takes on different faces, but I, as I'm listening, I, I, I think Chantal just said something and I was like, wow. And I was just looking back at, you know, being given, there, there was a project and it was four years and it was in the final year, nine months that I was hired. So nothing was done. This, the, 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 we, had, we had things to do. I inherited staff and the first thing in the, one of the things, so I asked a few questions in the interview and I was told they do not, I don't know, you have to get them to work. So before I got them, I knew that they, it's difficult to get them to do anything. So imagine now where, okay, I'm going, I started with the training and the whole democratic process and then I delegated. So I'm putting that out. And then there were individuals who they weren't used to this. And majority, I only had two females and five males. So imagine how difficult this is. And the males want to tell me, this is how it used to be done. And then I have to say, OK, this is how it's going to be done. And, um, and then there was just one person, this young female, who was just, she wouldn't budge. So then I, I, I had to think on the spot, what is it that's going to get her to, to just do? And I like that, you know what? There was a real challenge with her skills level and it made her uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So then I just put her, she liked to go out and she likes to go get things. So I'm like, you know what? You go to the ministry and you just tell them you want this. Tell, don't, tell them you can't go back without it. Oh my, that's when she really 
got results. And then I found out she liked the fundraising aspect of it. So I put her on that too. But others said, oh, are you spoiling her? But I had a, I have a experience, I have an experience with a family member and it just clicked. And that's how I was able to understand what to do. But really, this is a very difficult road to navigate when you're in the lead and you have just a few months to spend donor monies and not say this is a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for sharing that experience with us. Oh my God, I know how it feels. <laughs> it has happened to me already. And the thing is, it's that you then have to navigate each person. Now, if it's like a larger team too, and you have to figure out each of these people, it's just time. It takes so much time. So yeah. that is definitely something. So anybody else wanted to speak? I'm not seeing the participants. So... If you want I, to unmute. Yeah, um, my con little concern is like females is biology and males is like biology. Women and men are things. So like at least for the binary, I think it's best like women refer to ourselves as well, you know, women and then men, men, because females is like an animal kind of a thing. It's just, it's something, you know, how we call women female. Yo, it's like, mm -hmm. no, it's a person. So it's just, I know it's society, but it's something I always bring up because I think it, it's a it's it is important yeah, yeah yes thank you so much and it's true and that is the thing it's something you know in society now that we oh, we have to fight against so much of this oh. <laughs> if you know what i mean <laughs> it's like it's history and it's like it's perpetuated over time so it's like how do we deal with this hold on one second oh Okay, you thought. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it is um it is a societal thing. Um we do have to remember our gender roles, right? These are things that we have to look at it said, especially with everybody being who they are. That is the thing. Everyone is different. Everyone identifies as someone different. So we have to be cognizant of that fact as well. But we have to also remember our society is it's messy right now. And I hope that everything will just be much, much clearer soon. And this new generation that we have is going to break all of these stereotypes. And uh, I don't know, the mess, it gets me frustrated. <laughs> because we have to fight against everything it's not just gender too it's like just youth and and everything it's too much i'm seeing okay no, that's interpretation happening in the chat is anybody else with their hands up i can't see you so if you want to unmute and speak nobody okay so we continue leadership building so identifying the skills needed to lead effectively and create your action plan. You have to ask for feedback from work colleagues, line managers, and tutors. You have to practice. You have to take on responsibility in work, volunteering clubs and societies and reflect on your performance. You have to find a mentor and learn from positive leadership role models and attend further leadership and management training, which you are all doing today. <laughs> so let's break it down a little bit in this. Uh, so leadership building, we're trying to, we have to figure out in ourselves what kind of leader we are, yes, but then we also have to learn to adapt to these situations that we are in. And I think that these tips here, these steps then, you have to have an action plan built for every new situation that you are going to be leading in or that you're going to be part of. Because you can lead yourself and not be the leader of a team. So that's something that you have to think of as well. You have to be able to lead yourself through all the situations, all the projects, all of the work that you're going to be doing in your day-to-day -day life. So any of these pieces of information here, um, anybody has anything to discuss on them? I think we've noted most of these. So finding a mentor, or practicing and asking for feedback. Those are all things that we were talking about recent um, in, the, in the previous sections. So that's great. Um, in terms of action plan building, I think that that's a situation that you have to get into depending on 
what your activity is. So if it is like, for example, you're joining a new group. So for example, Caribbean Climate Network, <laughs> you're coming into the network um, from one of the countries in the Caribbean. So you yourself, uh, if you are the leader of your country uh, representatives, and membership, you will have to figure out how to communicate with them. You'll have to think about what activities you would want to have on the ground, how you're going to structure your um, your team, uh, what it is that you want to do. Those are the kinds of things that you're looking at. And even as a member, you can think of, okay, how can I assist my leadership, um, my the people in the leadership roles? How is it that I can uh, assist the Caribbean Climate Network with what they're doing? Um, and in the end of it, we just have to remember that we're all building towards a common goal. So it it is better to work together rather than work against each other. So that's that part. <laughs> and now for our last activity, this part is an all on your own study. I'm giving you all not homework, but because we can discuss it after I'm going to give you five minutes and you're going to assess yourself as a leader. So I don't know if you guys have done a SWOT analysis before, which is your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to you being a leader. That is basically like, so for example, one of my strengths is that I am very honest and open and I have a, an easygoing attitude when it comes to everything because I know that, um, I don't know why. I, anyway, but I, I have an easygoing attitude. So that's some of my strengths. Um, but some of my weaknesses is that I have a lot of anxiety, that I have a lot of worry, and I spread myself too thinly. Uh, some of my opportunities are that I, uh, let me see, opportunities are like the external factors. So I have a lot of support. And then some of the threats would be that I, hmm, I don't have any funding. Let's just say that. Right, so that's some of the things that you can assess yourself as a leader, and then from that you can then see where your your weaknesses and your threats are, and how you can move. towards overcoming them to become the most amazing leader that you can become. <laughs> and then the next part is to develop an action plan to improve yourself as a leader. So that's like listing two actions you will undertake to address weaknesses or keep, uh, capitalize on opportunities identified. So from the SWOT analysis, and then apply smart targets to your actions, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound, and create an action plan to help others reach their leadership potential. Because the great thing about what we are doing here by learning about leadership is that we are now going to spread what we've learned to people in our lives as well, and hopefully get them to be the leader that they want to be as well. So you can take a minute, screenshot this, um, and you can start. If you want any help, you can raise your hand, you can just unmute and chat with me a little bit about it but I will give you all three minutes to start. You can get out your pen and paper. <laughs> and I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Great, hi everyone. <laughs> and from here, right, so it's 6.45. We're just gonna take three minutes for you guys to note down. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, as well, so oh, apparently I can't screenshot this one because it's in the chat. Okay, hang on one minute. I'm just putting the English first and then the Spanish for the activity, right. So anybody has any questions, just raise their hands. Um, I think that this is a great critical analysis of your leadership potential and where you can then find any shortfalls that you might have um, and we can work on them together. So yes, I'm available for you guys to anytime you need feedback or you want to uh, bring anything up with me as well, you can always contact me after the training. I'm happy to help in any way 
I can to make you all reach your fullest leadership potential. <laughs> So if anyone, if anyone has any feedback or they want to share anything or if that was too fast, <laughs> we can um, always come back to it at the end if you guys want to stay on. Uh, so I just want to tie up with my last slide here. So we're here with good practices. So these are things that you can do to improve your, yes, your, your leadership. So first thing is to train, which is why you're all here today. So if it is that you can offer workshops on a regular basis, so this is if you are going to be a leader in your respective roles uh, and workplaces and stuff like that. So you offer workshops on a regular basis. Never think that something is so basic that it doesn't need a workshop and we can always learn something new. And sometimes you just need a refresher <laughs> as well. So another thing is that you should listen, listen to new ideas and help apply them because listening to the people that you're working with is always a great opportunity to learn new things as well. Give opportunities. Do not overlook the motivation of your volunteers. If you see them with interest, create roles for them. So same idea as the examples given earlier. You see someone who likes something, let them do it. You don't have to you know, force people into roles that they're uncomfortable with. Sometimes they do have their own skills and interests that will give them the best efficiency at doing something. Then you can integrate. You offer them information and invite them to leadership meetings to make them feel welcome. That's always very important for me as well. I always felt like if you're invited into spaces that you would not usually be invited into, I think that gives you an, a, side, a kind of empowerment. You are able to, as not a non-leader, if you're in a position where you can observe leaders interacting, I think that's always a great way to learn. Then another one is to offer space, to let them practice their skills of facilitating, leading, public speaking, et cetera, anything that helps them grow similar to what we just spoke of as well. And also most importantly, you have to celebrate parties, lunch, a certificate, a little gift. They are always, uh, they are always to celebrate as a group. So I completely agree with that. I think that everything deserves a celebration <laughs> from the smallest achievement to the biggest achievement. If you accomplish something as a team, that in itself is a huge thing to celebrate. So I hope that you all enjoyed the leadership training today. I have this quiz. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if it's in Spanish, um, but it's a leadership type quiz that you can see what type of leader you are. I'm gonna put this in the chat after, and I want to close off with a quote where leadership is not the private reserve of a few charismatic men and women. It is a process ordinary people use when they're bringing forth the best from themselves and others. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the training this evening. Thank you so much. And I'm going to open up the floor now if anyone wants to have any questions answered. Or oh, Afifa, thank you for putting it in the chat. So that's the quiz that you can do to find out what type of leadership style you have. Um, if anybody has any feedback for me, uh, we still have a couple more minutes. So please just open up your mic and let me know what you thought and if you need any help with your activities. I would say it's great. I like everything. Katrina, you know, I like everything you do. I don't understand why we go through this every single time. I love you openly and honestly love you. That's open information. I'll say this also. One thing is like in leadership, I understand people get busy in their lives, but once you have a team and you're working with this team to the best of your ability, know everyone's birthday, 
it's a nice common courtesy. Learn everyone on your team's birthday, just in case, and any other important dates, maybe. But start with your birthday. And another thing is, part of leadership is knowing that somebody got your back. Like, that's the general rule. Like, if you're in a team and if you want to call yourself a leader, you got to have make sure you have it standing by your team. And honestly, I, I hang out with a lot of dudes, and the rule is, like, friends don't let you do stupid things alone. And that's the rule. Like, we do stupid things, but we, we're not doing it alone. But that's kind of brings it all together, hopefully. Plus, at least what we do sometimes. Thanks. Thank you so much. I love you too. <laughs> Anybody else wanted to say anything? Thank you, Sula. And I now know your, your birthday, and my birthday is the 8th of November. So we're both November babies. <laughs> Anybody else wants to drop their birthday in the chat so I can um, send you guys a, a, a greeting? <laughs> Okay, Gina, since yours is the 8th of November, mine is the 8th of October. Ah, nice. Oh, so, yeah, we're just like one month apart. 8th, 8th. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Um, Shandal, that's a very good suggestion. Uh, you know, I, I should mention that I remember being hired into. Um, like a regional global office. And it's the first thing, you know, I'm so excited that we build this, you know, team. And so I had to I know it turns out offices, everybody's like, we're workaholics. So we, we had the birthday chart up. <laughs> but we wouldn't remember to celebrate at all, you know. It was it was just really funny. So I'm glad that she highlighted it because it's it's all it's good if we have someone to do that reminder and say, hey, birthdays are coming up, or the birthdays will come up, and then I forget to send out um happy birthday. So I need so, help. Okay, so one of the things that I'll add to the training for next time is one of these strategies is to open up with a birthday calendar. <laughs> yes, yes. Or I break a birthday calendar. <laughs> yes, or say, because, you know, like, even now, like, we have a church chat, and then I see everyone, I mean, I do see what's happening, and they post happy birthday, and then I'll probably post happy birthday tomorrow, belated birthday tomorrow, or late in the evening, and I'm like, why can't you just take this minute, and I'm thinking, no, I need to create a card, I need to make this beautiful, but everybody else is using all the little fancy things in the chat, and I'm, I'm procrastinating this, but I know it's simply because I'm like, oh gosh, to get around to this soft moment. So I, I think that's one of the areas I do need help with. <laughs> and I'm doing those birthday greetings. Yeah. So I did forget something else, guys. And thank you to Afifa for reminding me. I did a little poll. Uh, so it's going to pop up now. And if you can please kindly just answer the questions, let me know if you're seeing it. it's looking yes okay good i'm seeing results coming in thank you so much so this will help us um going forward as well and also i just wanted to uh give a little reminder i think everyone here are already members of ccn so i hope that you all got our june activities coming up this is like a very busy month uh we have another training coming up on the 8th and we have a paint party that is going to be launching our Adapt Now to Save Lives campaign. It's free, so all you have to do is bring your art supplies and you're going to be following me again, <laughs> painting uh, a mangrove landscape. And that's going to be on the 18th. And then for World Environment Day, we are launching a art, writing and video competition so that's on the 5th of june that is going to be launched so you guys can all keep up to date with those things uh, make sure if you haven't done it already please join ccn uh, our website is up and we have blogs and if anybody has anything that you would like to contribute to the network we are so happy to have you in your capacity. Everybody here is doing such amazing things in their countries. And I can't stress enough that I'm so grateful to you all for coming out tonight. Um, it, it's, it's really great to speak to everyone and, and have you all here. 
with us <laughs> as we, we grow our community. So yeah, thank you so much. If anybody wants to unmute and just say anything before we go. Well, Tracy, again, just thank you. <laughs> thank you for a really great session. I mean, you never stop learning and they, you know, they say iron shop and it's iron. So, and um, your personality is great. And I just want to say thank you very much, uh, Katrina. When you reached out to me, um, it was like, yeah, she's for real. She's one like, <laughs> like me, right? She's, yeah. So, you know, when you mentioned being authentic, we rarely come across that, but it's so important because like you said, I'm, think, I'm thinking that's why everyone is here because then you're doing what you're doing. But when you, you do want network, you do want to work with others and collaborate and you want to grow with others, but it, it's really come, it comes down to the personality. It's the personality that will make you say, hey, I want to be on board. So I just really want to thank you for that. Thank you so much, Tracy. And I want to thank especially Amira, who is our CCN main coordinator and Afifa, my fellow fellow. <laughs> and I also want to give a special thank you to our interpreters this evening, to you both. Thank you so much. <laughs> And everyone.